Good evening and welcome to this edition of News Leader. I'm Andrew Todd. In tonight's news, Manchester's sewer system is overflowing. We delve into the history of the Beechcraft and finally explain about proving you're a human to your computer. We'll have all these stories and more on tonight's News Leader. We teach Parkinson's patients how to move big and not let the Parkinson's slow them down. I've had patients I've treated in-house that could not even stand up, could not roll over in the bed, left the facility walking with a walker, have come back to us and outpatient and continued their big program and are now completely, you know, handling life. The success of the program is just phenomenal. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Hi, my name is Ringo. Here at Barkview Senior Living, they're human friendly. That's why I love it here, and so does my senior human. When they want a bite, they get chef-prepared meals, and so do I. Movies in the theater, day trips, walks on the trail, and other senior humans to play with. The grass and the grounds are exquisite. It's everything my human needs to be healthy and active. Barkview. <clears throat> a Parkview Senior Living. For your dog's best friend, you. Welcome back. On Tuesday, January 9th, the city of Manchester's local government posted on their social media, quote, due to the excessive amount of rain we have just received, the city sewer is currently experiencing several overflows within the system. These areas include Skinner Flat Road, Spring Street Bridge, Dave King Park near the railroad bridge. Discharges from these overflows consist or likely consist of untreated or partially treated sewage and waste. The public is advised to avoid contact with impacted water bodies for 48 hours after the discharge or overflow ceases due to increased health risks from bacteria and other pollutants." End quote. Manchester has been dealing with this issue increasingly and regularly receives fines from the state of Tennessee for sewer overflows. But the Board of Mayor and Aldermen are at a standstill on how to improve the ongoing situation. At the most recent Manchester Board of Mayor and Aldermen meeting, Mr. Austin was recognized for, the rec for his recent certification and accomplishment in wastewater treatment. So Mr. Bird uh, runs the Tennessee Association of Utilities Districts uh, Apprenticeship Program in Austin, Hitco, who works at our wastewater treatment plant is the first graduate in the state of Tennessee, and he's an excellent employee. Um, so we just wanted to honor him. He graduated, and um, he, it's not just a little thing. It's, I mean, it's a bunch of different classes you have to take, and at the end, you have to pass an examination. And he's now a uh, wastewater treatment plant operator grade three, which is what you guys need, and um, it's pretty, pretty decent. So, Any ovation? <laughs> 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 well, I'd just like to take just a moment of your time to thank you for your leadership. Thank Phil Miller for his leadership and understanding what this program can do. And it's a big deal to TAUD and it's a big deal to the state of Tennessee. We had representatives in town back in uh, December and the, and the mayor uh, hosted a little ceremony here for us and I greatly appreciate that and greatly appreciate Austin for his fortitude and his work ethic in, in getting this done. You now have a multi-certified hybrid operator that uh, is really going to strengthen your wastewater program and, uh, and, and it's great for the future of Manchester and TAUD is just proud to be a part of it and and congratulate Manchester on having the very first in the state. And uh, it's, it's a big deal to us and a big deal to the state of Tennessee. So thank you very much. And, and, and it's a mentor, mentorship program that not only just for wastewater, but other areas that... Absolutely. He, he will be, he's multi-certified, by the way. He doesn't just have the one certification. He has many certifications uh, that come as a part of it, but not only is he certified as an operator in wastewater, but he has a background in water treatment as well, which makes him that hard to find hybrid operator um, that uh, can very versatile. And again, I want to, um, this program requires mentorship for the on the job training portion, the 4,000 hours that he logged over this program. And um, 
Phil Miller was the mentor here from Manchester, and his leadership has been invaluable to the success of, of Austin as well. Thank you all for uh, letting me speak tonight, and thank you, Austin. Thank you, Phil, for uh, the hard work. And, and, I, and just re-emphasizing that when we went to uh, the, the the utility meeting at uh, MT, uh, at uh, that uh, T TMA, they were saying very few young there there are very few young operators for water and sewer. That most of the you can see the number of operators, but a lot of those operators are older, getting ready to retire, and they have, have multiple licenses. Absolutely. So so the fact that you mentored Austin and Austin. Get, get this, it's a very big deal to the to our water and sewer department. And, and I just say congratulations and thank you for the mentorship for Phil and, and also the program that you brought. Because these tasks are hard these, and, and a lot of young people, they, they're, they're working and they it just takes that mentorship that somebody's put, put it into them. And I just thank you so much. Thank you. Can we get a Austin, can we just turn around right there with the board in the background? Okay. Oh, three, one, two, three. So now let's give Austin a big Last week, the state of Tennessee gave the city of Manchester $1.6 million to improve their wastewater treatment. After these messages, we'll be right back. Parkview Senior Living, active, independent senior living at its finest. We tend to lose our motivation when we have something that's chronic, but you've got to do what you can early on as you can. After I'd exercise like that, I would have a lot of energy to do housework or whatever I needed. I would recommend it highly to anyone at any degree of Parkinson. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. At the most recent Lunch and Learn held at D.W. Wilson, Ms. Sharon Repke spoke to the gathering on the history of Beechcraft. In this opening clip, Sharon gives us a history on founders of the company, Travel Air, Mr. Beach, Cessna, and Stearman. Walter Beach was born in January on January 30th, 1890, 1891 in Pulaski, Tennessee. He started flying at the age of 14. Um, he built his own glider and he used his mom's bed sheets to do it, so she probably was not terribly impressed. Um, he joined the Army during World War I and he served three years as a pilot, a flight instructor, and an engineer. Um, when he got out of the military, he toured the U.S. as a barnstormer and entered a lot of races and did, did lots of wild stuff like that. He went to work for Laird Swallow Airplane Company as a test pilot and he made general manager in two years. He formed the Travel Air Company in 1924 along with two other gentlemen, Clyde Cessna and Lloyd Stearman. Um, he fell in love with Olive Ann Miller and they got married in 1930 and I'll tell you a little bit more about her and that relationship. He founded Beechcraft Air, Beach Aircraft Company in 1932 with his wife, Ted Wells, K.K. Saul, and C.S. Yankee. He became ill in 1940. Um, Olive Ann ran the company. Now, 1940 women weren't supposed to be doing stuff like that, but she ran the company um, while he was hospitalized, and then she turned it back over to him for a while. He passed away in 1950 at the age of 61. The next person I want to tell you about is Clyde Cessna. He was born in on December 5th, 1879. I can't get the 19 out. Um, he moved to Rago, Kansas. He was born in Iowa, and at the age of two, his family moved to Kansas, and that's how he got there. One of the questions we always get at the museum is, how did Clyde Cessna, Lloyd Stearman, and Walter Beach all get out to Kansas? Why did they go to Wichita? 
Um, well, he was born there, so he was just stuck. He witnessed an aerial expedition exhibition in 1918, 1910 and was bitten by the aviation bug. And he decided to build his own airplane in 1911, and he had lots of failures. Um, it was a linen and spruce aircraft. In 1911, he also flew that aircraft for five miles and became the first person to build and fly an airplane between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. He was the first president of a company called the Traveler Corporation. He left Traveler after two years and started his own company. And that would be Cessna Aviation. The next person is Lloyd Stearman. He was born October 26, 1998 in Kansas. So he was just there by default. He attended Kansas State College, which is now Kansas State University and is my alma mater. He majored in engineering and architecture. He enlisted in the Navy in 1918 and learned to fly seaplanes. He worked for Laird Swallow as a mechanic in the 1920s. He joined Walter Beach and Clyde Cessna to form the Travel Air Manufacturing Company in 1925. And he left in 1926 and started Stearman Aircraft Corporation, which eventually became Boeing. So these are the founders of Travel Air. They got together and started this air, airplane company. Um, we have serial number one Travel Air in the museum. I should have asked you this in the beginning. How many of you have ever been to the museum? Okay, how many of you are going to come soon? Everybody should have their hand up. More news is coming up in just a moment. It's not invoice. It's not MSRP. It's not Christmas Day, although it may feel like it. It's the lowest prices in Middle Tennessee, period. Get to Stan McNabb Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram or Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac before these prices are gone forever. I had a knee replacement, so they've got me in life care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been in several therapy sessions for knees and back, and that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. As we work to catch up on episodes of Coffee County Mayor Judd Matheny's Mayor's Messages, we now go to Judd's conversation with Coffee County's Director of Animal Control, Craig Boyd. Hello, welcome to this edition of the Mayor's Message, and we have a uh, repeat performance, uh, uh, second time guest, which we're going to start having more of those as we progress through projects, and, and uh, we do some initial meetings of uh, some commissioners, elected officials, and, and uh, persons of note here in the county. And uh, we have Craig Boyd with us again. He's the director of our animal control, and we've done quite a lot since we had him here last time on the development and uh, implementation of the first stages of our animal control center and um, our animal services center. I like that name better. Uh, we're uh, names yet to be determined on, on uh, that will hang on the wall. But uh, once again, I can't say enough positive things about Craig and his staff. Uh, they've done a whole lot with a little, and we want to give them more tools and more resources in the future, which will in turn give our county more. Just uh, real quick, uh, Craig, I'll give a, a sort of a macro on where we are, and then I want you to talk about your desires for the design of the shelter and, and what you would like to see. And uh, of course, we need community help. The county's put a substantial amount of money in. The community already has. We're still continuing. I'm continuing to raise money for the shelter for capital issues. Um, one is a digital billboard, um, talking to several folks, but uh, don't have anything uh, anywhere near firm yet for a digital billboard out front that we can have messages, adoptable dog or cat of the day, um, uh, advertisements if necessary, everything on a nice digital billboard that will run perpendicular to uh, Hillsborough Highway um, outside the shelter. We have three acres of land that was donated by Tom and Karen Rice here in Coffee County, which is prime land. We had a groundbreaking on December 7th, and uh, we have an uh, initial drawing of the facility that uh, will be hanging on the outside fence very soon. Um, Scott St. John Engineering has been awarded the architectural design contract, and uh, he's collaborating with some other folks here in the county to 
um, work with Craig to design a shelter um, that has multi-uses. And Craig, I want you to kind of talk about that, please. Uh, my biggest thing with the shelter, I want it to be usable for us as animal control, but also engage the community. And the design I'm going for with the wings, it'll be able to separate everything. Uh, volunteers, people looking for adoptable dogs will actually be able to walk into the shelter where the dogs are. That's not being done right now. Everybody's been begging for it for years. And I think with this design, it's going to be a great opportunity to really get let people get their feet in the door and interact with the dogs. Um, so kind of what you're saying, and, and you'll be able to see this in the drawing outside on the, the fence very soon, we'll sort of have one wing that's a quarantine. Quarantine wing and stray for, animals. For new dogs and strays that come in, and I think you keep them up to 10 days at least mm -hmm. in there. Make sure they don't have disease, uh, they're not injured. There's some things that we don't want them to affect the population right. that the public is looking at and potentially uh, adopting at some point, right. hopefully. And then you'll have another wing that is available for the public to go into. Yeah, that's the dogs we know that are healthy. They've been assessed um, temperament-wise. We know they're adoptable dogs, so they'll be um, be the ones the public can be hands-on with. Excellent. And I think uh, you've designed some uh, indoor rooms where the public could take those dogs and visit with them, maybe. Or, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we will have a viewing room. A viewing room. And uh, also we have a couple of uh, outdoor areas, uh, maybe one quarantine, one public, um, where the dogs can get some fresh air. Um, you know, we hope to be able to have uh, some outdoor runs also for dogs to get some fresh air and sunshine. Um, there's uh, some exam rooms in there, some office space. Um, the county will run this operation in its entirety, but we are going to need some volunteers that are competent and capable and, uh, and really care about the mission. And uh, Craig's staff will uh, somehow come up with a, a, uh, a way to manage those volunteers yeah. and schedule them that is uh, uh, good for everybody. And uh, our attorney, Ed North, is working on the liability issues to make sure that the county is uh, protected from any liability with volunteers. And uh, so we'll have that worked out, but we'll have a clean, safe facility for that. Um, in addition to, and, and I know I'm, uh, have asked you to kind of look at this too, and I'm gonna get out here and try to raise the money for it. I'd like to have some, uh, maybe a, a room dedicated to uh, spaying and neutering, not full time, but when we want to have a spay and neuter event, we have a room in the back, an operating right. type room, um, and maybe talk to some vets about getting some core operating tables and things like that, lighting donated, so they can just come in, do their thing and leave, and then our volunteers or us can, can help tidy it up afterwards. Vets times, vet text times uh, are very valuable right now. Yeah. Um, there's such a surge in domestic animal population and, and the need for that, which is all the reason for a, a new modern friendly shelter too. Um, man, anything else? Um, I know you're gonna, I, I want you to design this thing. Um, I've got some ideas that, that I'll continue to submit to you that I, I've learned. Of course, you've done so much research looking at so many shelters. Um, we're gonna have you obviously engaged heavily with the architect because, because you know this will be your facility um, that you'll be operating on behalf of the county and we want it to be um, what you've learned throughout your career is, is the most um, efficient way to do the most work for the for the community. Right. And man, uh, we really appreciate you again. Your staff's great people. Um, you're all at the groundbreaking. Um, you can see some news in the groundbreaking on some various media stations here. And uh, Greg will put your uh, email and telephone number up on the screen so people can contact you with any issues. Uh, see any strays, um, have any animal welfare concerns, um, deceased animals, things like that, um, you can call Craig and he can help you uh, seek advice or remedy those situations. Yep. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time. And thank you very much for joining this edition of The Mayor's Message. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. My husband was diagnosed with a spinal infection. He lost his ability to swallow and the movement of his legs. I couldn't turn over in bed, I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat. They were just wonderful in the treatment and care they gave my husband. I uh, regained my mobility where I was able to go home. It is miraculous. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Times are very challenging right now and stress levels are high. Reports indicate overdoses on the rise in communities across the state of Tennessee. Those experiencing addiction and their loved ones may be struggling to navigate through all the change. 
We want you to know that deaths from overdose are preventable. And help is available. Anytime. Day or night. How do I know? How do I know? I, I am, am a face, face of recovery, recovery in, in Tennessee. Tennessee. Welcome back. The Tennessee Department of Transportation is working to make the dismal drive from Manchester to Nashville on I-24 easier for us. Part of their proposed solution is smart corridors with self-adjusting speed limits. This video gives more details. It's one of the busiest corridors in Tennessee. For the many who live in and visit the Volunteer State, they drive along the I-24 smart corridor between Nashville and Murfreesboro. So what makes it smart? The variable speed limit signs. These additions provide enforceable speed limits that are updated in real time to have drivers slow down when getting closer to incoming congestion. So our variable speed limit system uses sensors to monitor real-time traffic conditions. When average speeds reduce ahead of a crash or congestion, we update the speed limits on the, on the gantries to reflect that reduced speed. Having a gradual reduction of speed helps lessen the chances of secondary crashes. These crashes worsen traffic congestion, as a quarter of congestion is caused by traffic incidents, according to TDOT Incident Management. This is really effective in reducing secondary crashes, rear-end crashes. One of the aspects of the project is to improve safety. With the gradual speed reduction, as drivers approach a congested area with slow speeds, the idea is to prevent drivers from sudden stops um, and drastic slowdowns. These speed limits are pivotal in providing safe and consistent travel along the corridor and is what the Tennessee Highway Patrol will monitor. We're pretty confident in that signage being able to tell you what's ahead, but that doesn't mean that you don't need to be paying attention. Use it to your advantage because it's there and monitored to give every driver the best information so they can get through as quickly as possible. Variable speed limits are one of the things the corridor brings to keep your commute smarter. Anyone who uses the internet on a regular basis has had to deal with having to prove they are human to proceed on a web page. This video answers the question, couldn't a robot click the button that says, I am human? Why can't robots check the box that says, I'm not a robot? I mean, robots can do heaps of complex things these days. So what is stopping them from ticking a simple checkbox? Well, the box is a newer version of a system that used to be called CAPTCHA. CAPTCHA, completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. You might remember they used to look like this. But as robots got smarter, CAPTCHAs got harder and they became completely inaccessible to the vision impaired. And the rest of us. Is that even a letter? By 2014, Google had designed AI software that could pass 99.8% of CAPTCHA tests, while humans were only passing 33% of them. Maybe it's a magic eye. I think I see a dolphin. Meanwhile, spammers without supercomputers could still get around CAPTCHAs by paying workers in digital sweatshops to solve them at a rate of 30 US cents per thousand CAPTCHAs sold. Now, these services are still online today. Ah! What's their address? So that's why Google invented the box. They called it ReCAPTCHA. So now I just click the box that says I'm human and that's it? In this case, yep. Well, why can't a robot do that? Well, they can. But the click isn't the test. The test comes before the click, like the way your mouse moves towards that box. Google tracks that kind of thing. A cursor controlled by a bot moves in a suspiciously straight line at a consistent speed, whereas your mouse movements are, well, uh, they're um, uh, only human? Exactly. If the site's still unsure, you'll have to click on the squares with fire hydrants or crosswalks or traffic lights. Google hasn't told us how recapture works exactly, but experts think this traffic light section might also be a mouse movement test. Which is why you pass, even though you missed two millimetres of traffic light rim in the second square. Well, I'm only human! So true. So what's stopping spammers from paying sweatshops to beat these new captures? Nothing. Their workers get paid a whole one US dollar to complete a thousand captures. But there is just one uh, tiny other little thing. Yeah? Modern recaptures also examine your browsing history. What? Your previous internet activity is the clearest giveaway of who is human and what's a bot. 
Bots, for instance, don't generally Google themselves while perving on pictures of young King Charles and looking into forehead reduction surgery. I did not give them permission to do that. You gave Google permission to? I did not! Yes, you did. Check the privacy link. It takes you straight to Google's privacy statement, which has this video. We also collect info as you use our services, like the searches you make, ads you interact with, and visits to websites that use our services. Google assumes permission to track you all the time. In fact, the latest versions of ReCapture don't even need you to tick a box. They just use your tracking info. And well done. You pass by exhibiting incompetence at every turn. You must be human. What? Don't worry, human error looks really good on you, girl. Anyway, thank you for the intel. Later, humans. Stay with us. Your weather forecast is coming up after these messages. For many senior citizens, life looks like this. But it doesn't have to. When you make your home at Parkview Senior Living, life after retirement takes on a whole new meaning. Daily exercise options, fun outings, happy hour, game nights, movies and popcorn, arts and crafts, enjoying friends over chef-prepared meals. Parkview Senior Living, where you're always home, but you're never home alone. The Bookshelf in Tullahoma is the fundraising arm of the Coffee County Literacy Council. Since 1988, the Literacy Council's goal and purpose has been to support and promote adult basic education in Coffee County. We enable individuals to complete their high school equivalency exam, which helps them get better jobs or continue into higher education. The Bookshelf at 114 Southwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma is where we sell used books, which are donated to us by the community. Come see us, bring your books to donate, and join us as you find every genre of books that you can imagine. Welcome back. We'll take a look at your weather forecast at this time, starting with your weather history on this date. Our record high was in 2020 at 71 degrees. The record low was in 1962 at negative 4 degrees. The average high for this day is 48, and the average low is 29. Cloudy for tonight with a low of 41. Rain expected for Friday with a high of 57 and a low of 23. Sunny skies for Saturday with a high of 41 and a low of 21. And that's our News Leader Report for this evening. We invite you to join us each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evenings at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. for News Leader. Stay safe. Have a great evening.